everyone, Terry Walbrock here. Just wanted to take a moment before today's episode. This is actually a special edition episode with the author of two of the books that I have narrated and produced so far, the audiobooks. So, um, yes, yeah, she's here to talk about the inspiration behind these books. But I love these books because they so resonate with the message of the show, which is uh, healing and then modalities for um, our healing journeys. And one of those things that I talk about often on the show is mindfulness and meditation. So these two books, she is the author of the Best Bedtime Stories for Stressed Out Adults. And these books both include meditations at the end of each chapter. And we added some music. Um, yeah, just really awesome books for relaxation. Uh, so yeah, so that is what today's interview is all about. You can find these audiobooks that I have narrated. I'm just now working on a fifth one. Uh, you can find those on Audible. If you go to Terry Welbrock Narrator on Audible or Terry Welbrock on Audible, um, you can find all of the books that I have I've narrated so far. And these two are among those. So, all right. Well, now for today's wonderful episode. Welcome everybody to the Healing Place podcast. I am your host, Terry Welbrock. And today, I know, I know I always say like I'm doing a happy dance, but I'm really like I'm like doing an extra happy dance because uh, today I have Angie Vish with me and she and I connected through ACX uh, doing an audiobook project together. She's written two amazing books so far um, called and I'm going to my brain, I have it in my brain because I said it so many times as I was narrating, which is the best bedtime stories for stressed out adults. And there's uh, volume one and volume two. And so she's here, yeah, to talk about the inspiration behind these books and to share more of, of some pretty exciting announcements from her end. So welcome, Angie. Thank you so much, Terry. Uh, it's, it's such a pleasure being on your show. And I really thank you for the opportunity um uh today thank you so much oh absolutely and i do have to say before i forget because I, I i'll put it in show notes too but when you go to look up the books on um amazon or audible it's under sky claire and so it's s-k-y-e-c-l-a-i-r-e -E. so just know it's under that name uh as pen name for the author so just that was just a little p.s so yeah so Talk to us about um, the inspiration behind the creation of these books. So, um, you know, I've been thinking for, for a long time about um, doing something meaningful and, um, you know, bringing about uh, a sense of mindfulness and, um, you know, positivity to, to those around me. And, um, you know, growing up, my grandmother was, was a big, big source of inspiration to me. Um, she was the person that... Um, always told me stories of uh, fantasy and, um, you know, uh, and, and she always encouraged me to, to, to think creatively and um, develop that um, aspect of things. And, um, you know, growing up, my family, uh, we were actually um, living in several cities. And um, there was a time when, um, as, as a child, I was basically um, in an environment that was you know, very difficult to deal with. It was not a very safe neighborhood. And um, um, my mom was actually um, faced with a situation where she was um, uh, held at gunpoint and I was only in, in grade two. So, um, you know, it was, it was a very uh, traumatic and shocking experience for my family. But um, my grandmother, she was uh, luckily always around to sort of um, be the anchor and um, the, the grounding force in my family. And, um, you know, uh, every day I would come home from school and she would be there, um, you know, uh, w w with a hot meal uh, ready for me and my brother. And um, she would you know, tell me to sit down, uh, calm down for a while. And she would start telling me these stories and, and they were so beautiful. And um, I think she used to make them up on the spot. 
and, you know, she's very creative um, herself, but um, they were usually about, you know, um, kings and queens and, um, you know, far off places and, and castles and um, fantastical worlds. And these were stories I loved listening to every day. Um, you know, I would come from, I would come home from school, tired and drained and worried and anxious as, as a, as a, as a little girl, um, especially after uh, what had happened to my mom. And, you know, that was um, when I was, maybe six years old. So um, I, I was dealing with a lot um, internally and, and and to come home and, you know, have my grandma be, be sort of like the person that was always there for me, telling me these beautiful stories to help me um, get through those troubling moments, I think really helped me. Um, and, um, you know, I, I used to, to listen to her every day and I would basically fall asleep listening to those stories. And um, they would calm me down and, um, you know, I, I'd be ready the next morning um, to, to go back to school. And um, I did find that, you know, the more I listened to her stories, um, the more I would actually feel relaxed at school as well. So, you know, um, I think I would always hold on to her stories and um, they would remind me to, to, to focus on, on myself and, you know, my family and on, on the good memories and, and and positive things in my life and um they would basically you know take me away from 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 the fear and anxiety that i had to constantly deal with um uh, at that moment uh, at that point in my life so um you know uh, those stories stuck with me um and i i definitely um you know became an avid reader and I became a writer myself. I was inspired to become um, the editor in chief for my high school newspaper growing up. And um, I always had a flair for writing, you know. Um, so a few months ago, I decided to sort of like, you know, take that next step and um, think about writing my own books. So, um, and, and I thought to myself, what better way to, 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 to get into this than to write stories about, um, you know, uh, places and, and, and beings that um, uh, have to do with mystery and, and fantasy. And um, I, I just thought that, you know, through my stories, I'd be able to convey to others that they can also, um, you know, de-stress and unwind and um, relieve their anxiety. So um, I, I decided to put together uh, these, these books, um, these bedtime stories for stressed out adults. And I, I, I think, you know, um, a lot of us can can use these uh, bedtime stories to to put ourselves at ease. You know, um, there's constantly so much chaos around us, and um, I, I think these stories are a great way for for people to um, just you know um, relax and unwind and 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 find some uh, quiet moments of solace. And uh, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm hope. I'm hoping that um, you know people can feel inspired by these stories to. Um, you know, um, find some some moments of positivity in their own lives. Yes. Well, and I know as narrating them, I loved, to, you know, as just speaking about because I found myself in, in the narration in those worlds. And that's why I just really resonated and connected with it, whether it was dragons or on the hot air balloon or whatever it would be. Um, I was there. And so I tried through my voice to have that energy come through that I was in those places um, doing the same thing, you know, in the library and during storms. And it was just, it was just so cool to allow myself to go into these places and, and try to put that message out that you were conveying. And, you know, you and I talked um, on the phone a couple of weeks ago and I said, my grandmother was such a calming anchor just a grounding force in my chaotic childhood um my first 10 years of life my dad was physically abusive my mom was an alcoholic my my whole life um and so having grandma kitty there and just her simple things my sister and i talk about like i would be mesmerized because she would take an apple and be able to take the skin off in one giant swirl without it breaking. And then she wow. would hold it up and I would take this apple skin and eat it and just think it was the coolest thing in the world because it was like an accordion. And, but the fact that she just took the time, never yelled at me, never hit me, just was a loving, beautiful presence. So it, it just makes my heart happy that you had that same 
presence of a grandparent uh, in your life. And, you know, in trauma recovery, it's incredibly important and it shows that it helps children with build resilience when they have that one caring adult in their life, whether it's a coach, a teacher, a grandparent, wh whoever it is that the neighbor that can make the child feel valued, heard, loved, um, very powerful. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I know another part of the books was um, we added some, you had the vision of having some background music. And so thank you for teaching me about that because I researched and watched videos and read a lot, like how to put it in and what's the best way. And so we, we really worked together and I love that we, you know, worked as a team together to be like, oh, hey, this track is a little too loud. Let's try this one instead. Yes. Um, and I love that, that it, I was able to work with you and create what you wanted. But the reason I brought that up is there's meditations at the end of each chapter. And so yeah. that's also a very important part of these books. And we would change, we would change the music. And so just to fit with that meditation. So talk to us a little about, bit about the meditations. So the meditations um, are related to each story. So um, these stories are, you know, uh, based on fantastical characters and, you know, um, and realms, as, as you mentioned. So um, I thought that, you know, having a meditation at the end of each story would sort of bring everything together and um, make it a more practical experience for people to sort of, um, you know, have in their lives that they can. Uh, say, yes, you know, th they're also able to experience these things from the story in their own way. So um, I basically took elements of the story and created a guided meditation based on, um, you know, the, the, the environments in the story or the characters in the story. So after reading each story, people can listen to the guided meditation with you know very soothing music in the background to help them relax and um, picture themselves in those settings and um, really get absorbed you know um, in the guided meditations um, and um, just have those moments of you know connection to the story to the characters in the story and sort of just like you know personalize the experience for themselves you know maybe they want to be um, in a meadow versus, you know, a, a, the forest setting that that the, that the story might be about, but um, that gives them the opportunity to sort of um, let their imagination run wild and, um, you know, just um, absorb themselves, um, even if it's, you know, for maybe five minutes in that in that scenario. Um, it, it definitely helps to have those guided meditations as they, as they definitely bring about a lot of peace and. Um, you know, uh, and, and quiet time, um, and, and they help you wind down and relax before um, going to bed. So, you know, um, I've definitely been doing my guided meditations for um, several years now. And, you know, um, they've helped me relax and um, unwind. So that's, um, that's the essence I wanted to bring to the stories as well to, to give readers and listeners an opportunity to, to practice these practice these um, guided meditations themselves and, and, and benefit from them. Yes. And I have to say, I, I, again, like I just found myself so captivated and in, in the moment as, as I would narrate the one of the meditations that's popping into my head right now is the one I think it's in the desert and with the with the crystals and I could almost I literally felt them in my hands in, in as I was talking or speaking and, and narrating. And so, again, just very powerful and um, mindfulness and meditation uh really has helped me along my personal healing journey and I, I speak to it often people will say all right Terry you talk about having this big coping skills toolbox like what's your go-to and I always say mindfulness like yeah. doing my mindfulness exercises and meditation um just brings me uh, incredible calming um peace even even in the midst of chaos so yeah again I just so resonate with with the book and the messages that you're putting out of self-care. I mean, which yes, is really absolutely. the most important thing. Yes, um, definitely. Self -care. So you told me right before we hit record, I'm so excited <laughs> that you have launched a new website and um, 
and you're doing some yin yoga and mindfulness practitioner work. So talk to us about all of that awesome news. So, um, you know, I, I recently launched uh, a website and it's uh, www.lovelightandthemind.com. Um, the inspiration for my website actually um, just came to me as I was taking uh, a quick brief walk outside um, one afternoon. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should just, you know, uh, do something more meaningful um, just to to spread the message and, you know, um, and um, help others in, in, in my own way as a, as a compliment to my books. So um, I was asking myself or, you know, I was, I was um, digging deep for, for guidance from a higher power and um, just the word love obviously uh, came to mind and I was like, okay, so love. So what should, what should, you know, the second part to that be? And, and, um, how, how can I bring about like a more meaningful, um, you know, uh, name to my website? So, you know, I, I, as, I was, as I was thinking about that, all of a sudden, you know, the words love, light and the mind um, j just popped up in my head. And I was like, OK, that sounds really interesting because, you know, um, I think we could all use some love and, and light in our lives. And sure, you know, um, our mind is definitely the source of um, our experience, right? So what we choose to experience is really uh, based on what we feed our mind. So um, I just thought that all of that definitely comes together very nicely. So I was like, okay, let me let me start my own website and call it lovelightandthemind.com. And um, things started to fall in place one by one. And, um, you know, the, the website has several guided meditations, several resources for parents, um, for busy professionals who are looking to, um, you know, uh, practice mindfulness in their daily work, um, resources for teens, for kids, you know, um, and, and we're definitely going to be adding more content to the website. And um, I'm actually a, 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 an instructor of yin yoga myself, and I practice mindfulness. So um, uh, I'm, I'm launching a yin yoga classes as well. So, you know, um, all of that good stuff is, 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 um, right around the corner. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this and uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to, to make a positive difference. Yes. And one thing, if you don't mind speaking on it, because I think so many people are, are feeling that, that, that nudge, that urge, that they, they want to put something out to, to help others, to guide others. And so by trade, this isn't what you've studied to do or, so what's your, what do you do for a living? So I'm actually an accountant. Um, I'm a CPA by background um, and training. Um, but I do have a double major in accounting as well as psychology. Um, so, um, you know, I, I decided to sort of like pursue um, the gentler side of things. And, you know, I, I do have an interest for um, meditation and spirituality and, and things like that. So, um, you know, uh, I, I just started thinking about this and, um, and I, as, as, as I was writing my second book, um, my grandmother, um, incidentally passed away. So, um, I was dealing with a lot, um, a few months ago and, um, you know, uh, many things, you know, got me thinking and, um, as an account, and we're we're always busy with our daily work, and um, you know we're, we're so focused on getting everything right and perfect. But um, we do need that moment of you know um, just relaxation. So I think mindfulness and certainly active listening and um, meditations help us you know recharge ourselves and and sharpen our skills and. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to do something more creative and, you know, just sort of just like, you know, give my brain some time to to relax and, and um, recuperate from from everything that I've, you know, been going through and um, all the challenges I've faced. And I just thought that, um, you know, what better way to heal than to help others heal. Um, so I think that was also a, a motivation behind me um, writing my books was, you know, um, what's a, what's a good way that I can sort of like, you know, um, make a meaningful difference, but at the same time, um, you know, uh, be more giving and be more caring. So I, I do, I do find that, you know, the, the more you give, the better you feel. So, 
um, you know, by writing these books and, and you know, uh, writing these stories and taking the time to really think about how, how I wanted my books to, to, to feel to, to the reader and, you know, um, and certainly the experience I wanted to provide to the listeners as well through the audio books. Um, I realized that I was actually healing myself in the process as well and, you know, um, helping myself um, think more positively and um, think more along the lines of uh, moving forward and, um, you know, just, just, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful experience being able to, to give something to others and um, instead of thinking about yourself all the time. So, um, yeah, I think that that was really the, the, the motivation behind um, everything that's happened so far. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And again, I just think your, your story is such an inspiration because there's so many people who may be doing something totally different but but they keep feeling this, you know, I call them angel whispers, but whatever it is, something something is there saying, and it just keeps coming up, it just keeps coming up, it just keeps coming up. Whether You know, if you're open to the signs, especially you're like, oh, I see the neon sign. All right, all right. right. <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, so that's why, I, again, I just think the fact, you know, that you working in one field, I, I myself was working, I worked in banking, I worked in insurance, I worked uh in, in all of these other fields, but my degree was in psychology. And so I just right. kept, I kept being, you know, gently nudged over this way, over this way, go this way. And so yeah. ended up at a mental health agency when I lived in Ohio and a little therapist, um, friend of mine, I say little, I, only because she was like in her twenties and I was in my forties or fifties, early fifties. And she said, Hey, Terry, let's start a podcast. And she was, she was a therapist. And I was like, awesome. What's a podcast? <laughs> Cause I had no idea. And so she ended up getting a, another job at a hospital and couldn't continue with it after about 10 episodes. So I took it on and it's just blossomed, but yeah, it's amazing how we can take those nudges um, and follow them. So I'm so glad you did. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I think, you know, um, taking the first step is definitely the hardest thing to do. And um, just, getting some kind of guidance on on what to do um, in the first place. You know, I think everybody wants to do something positive and meaningful, but we just don't know where to begin. So um, uh, I, I definitely believe in, you know, taking walks out in nature and, you know, clearing your mind. And I, I just feel like those uh, moments of inspiration just happen. And when they do, I think it's very important to, to sort of like, you know, um, heed to that, heed to that um, guidance that we do receive. Um, and not just, you know, uh, let them, um, you know, sort of like dissolve into into nothingness, right? So like, I feel like we receive messages all the time, but we can choose to listen to them, or we can just let them dissolve. And, you know, um, there are times when um, I've sort of like had very good messages come through, and I've sort of just like, you know, let them slip away. But um I'll wait another few months and those messages keep coming back. Yeah. And I feel like, okay, so there was that one time I received that message. I didn't do anything about it. So now this message is coming back to me and I feel like I should do something. So that's happened to me so many times where I've, I've you know, been called to do something more, um, maybe um, do like a meditation class or, um, you know, just help others in some way. And um, I didn't really know what to do or, or where to begin. Um, but I just feel like um, being an author and being, you know, involved in, in, in positive work and light work and, and things like that has, has sort of like, you know, uh, paved a clearer path for me on, on what I want to do and, and, and where I want to go with this. So, um, yes, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think it, it, it does have to do a little bit with timing, but it, it's also, um, you know, personal effort and sort of like, you know, um, listening to um, that, that guidance that that's received and not just ignoring it and, and pushing it under uh, the rug. So, yes. Um, oh, yeah. Agreed. For sure. And I have to tell you, so before <laughs> I hit, rec before I, I came into the office, I, I record my audio books in a little soundproof room upstairs, um, just because then it makes it not echoey and all that. My, my office is a little more echoey. And so my microphone was upstairs because I was working on another book yesterday. And um, I was like, oh, I have to go get my microphone. So I had walked into my office here and my light started flickering. 
And I was like, oh, well, my mom, my mom had passed in March of this year and on my birthday. And uh, so I said, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, mom. (laughs) So anyway, I just walked out, went upstairs, got my microphone. And as I walked back in the office, a card, a birthday card on my shelf, like flew off the shelf. And I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck is happening? So I looked at the card and I said, oh, it's a message for like, what we are going to discuss today with you and I, and I'm going to go grab it really quick because it's right behind okay. me. Okay. Hold on one second. So I put it back on the shelf. It says, embrace each day, laugh often, play, dance, dream. And then it says, follow your heart. It's got a little wow. heart on it. And so I was like, all right, that's such a beautiful message. Thanks for that reminder, whoever threw that card off my <laughs> So, wow. yeah, I love, again, I love it that you, um, you, I think when we open ourselves up to those messages and um, allow the possibility of um, these whispers and again, these, the guidance to come through, it's, it really has an impact, a beautiful impact on our lives. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So talk to us about how people can find the books and how they can connect with you. We we have your website um, so they can connect with you through there. Yes, they can connect with me through there. Um, they can send me an email at info at love, light, and the mind.com. Um, and they can find the books on Amazon. They're available for purchase um, on Amazon. Um, the links are on the website. And um, I believe, Terry, you have the links as well. So, um, yep. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll put it all in, yeah. in show notes, everybody. So be sure if you're on YouTube, scroll down. Um, if you're on any of the um, audio only, like Spotify, Apple, Amazon, iHeartRadio, Pandora, all that fun stuff. Um, just scroll scroll down a little bit and um, you'll see show notes and I'll put links for everything in there so you can find it there as well. So, well, I certainly wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about anything that uh, we haven't touched upon yet. Um, No, I think, you know, um, we've talked about a lot of things and, um, you know, I I really thank you for this wonderful opportunity to, to, to have me on your podcast. You know, it's, it's been amazing um, uh, talking to you and, and you're such a, huge source of inspiration for for so many and and certainly um you've inspired me to sort of you know uh, pursue what i think i should do um without fear and um you know i'm i'm, I'm definitely looking forward to 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 see where this takes me and um to, to stay motivated and, and positive so thank you so much terry and and thank you so much for all of the work that you do i think it's it's wonderful and your podcast um is is fantastic and 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 thank you so much oh you made my heart smile i could feel it all get all swelly so (laughs) (laughs) well thank you it's just been again i the moment i came across your books and started you know i was like oh i need to audition for these books it it was just like like the soul connection kind of thing and um you are just such a beautiful radiant light and um definitely a light worker and so again i just i feel blessed that that we've connected and so glad we were able to work on the on these two projects together so and thanks for also yeah coming to join me on the show and just um sharing the the story behind the books so yeah absolutely thank you so much terry it's a pleasure speaking with you awesome thank you all right well everyone thanks for joining us today on the healing place podcast and remember until next time be gentle with yourself thanks bye-bye hey everybody terry welbrock here just wanted to thank you again for being a part of this healing space and my hashtag hope for healing journey Thank you for sharing, liking, inviting others to join, listening in. Uh, You've really helped this show blossom. It has now been downloaded in 136 countries and is in the top 2% globally out of 3.2 million shows, which is just amazing. And it's all because of you and your tuning in and inviting others and sharing and liking and loving and your reviews on apple really help too my goal is to hit 100 five-star reviews uh, by the end of the year and i am closing in on that so if you are listening in on apple or apple podcasts 
please go and rate the show and leave a review if you absolutely love it. And uh, I would be most appreciative. Also, if you would like to receive my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter, please be sure to go to terrywellbrock.com. It's T-E-R-I, just one R, W-E-L-L-B-R-O-C-K.com. And I have a, uh, a gift to send you for signing up for that monthly Hope for Healing newsletter. Plus, there are many other resources listed on that page, including a resource library. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.